agradecimiento por estar aquí. In 1987, I started my first year as a state senator in the Illinois Senate. And there was a lot of activity around school reform back then. And that activity resulted in 1988 passage of a school reform bill, a Chicago school reform bill, that created local school councils. And back then, the argument was that we needed more parental involvement, that we needed parental involvement in the decision-making process. We needed parents to assume full responsibility for their schools to ensure that their children would receive a quality education. And here we are, decades later, with local school council members. How many of you are local school council members? Please raise your hand. Lo local school council members. And so most of the local school council is here. Obviously, the majority of the local school council is here. And I've just been informed, because let me as an aside, say, I'm here because the parents contacted me and came to see me this Saturday uh, and asked me to look at this situation. And I said that I would be here today. Uh, but it disturbs me greatly to learn that it's been 14 days and they have not had contact with the Chicago Board of Education. And I asked, is there a letter? Is there a notice of some sort? Has there been a phone call? What communication has taken place? None. That, None. that is not the way CPS Central Administration should treat local school councils. I will upon returning to my office this afternoon, call Ron Huberman, and I will call others, including the local elected officials, and ask them to please resolve this issue immediately. I, I, and I appreciate that, but, but this, is, this, is, this is very serious here. You know, in looking at the, and going inside the building and seeing the mattresses that they have there and the meals that they're serving, uh, I have to ask, why did it get to this point? Mm. Why, in a system where we are talking about the importance of strengthening neighborhood schools, as, yes, we establish more charter schools and other academic options for children, the bottom line remains that in order for CPS students to make progress, in order for us to reduce that achievement gap that exists in the city of Chicago, we need to strengthen our neighborhood schools. Not every child in the city of Chicago can go to a magnet school. Not every child in the city of Chicago can go to a selective enrollment school. Not every child in the city of Chicago can go to a charter school. Those options are nice. but. Until we strengthen our neighborhood schools, we're not going to see the kind of quality educational opportunities that every child in the system needs and certainly every child in the system deserves and every child in the system has a right to receive. And so it is important that this matter get resolved. And I, I wonder, I, I, sometimes I wonder what goes on in the minds of some of the bureaucrats because here we have space, much needed space, desperately needed space that is not available in that building that is used for parent classes, it is used for sewing classes, it is used for English as a second language classes. Exactly, exactly the type of thing that we keep telling our schools they have to do more yes. of. Yes. So on the one hand, 
tell schools that they've got to develop after school programs, that they have to have more programs to engage the parents and the families, and then we don't recognize that the space that is being utilized is absolutely necessary. And then I've, I've been told that you have individuals who have volunteered to help finance the rehab of this building. Yes. yes. And to ensure that it is up to code and that it meets standards. Yes. yes. And so this is not about costing additional dollars. <laughs> These are common sense things. Yes. Where Where is the common sense? I, I don't know. I don't know really the answer to that question at this point in time. Now, there may very well be other plans. There may be master plans that I'm not privy to. I've been around long enough to know yes. that that happens, mm. that sometimes there are master plans that do not involve you and that do not involve the local school council. I, I, I recognize that. If there is a master plan of some sort for this location, for this land, then please let the parents know. Yes. Let the community know. Yes. We live in a day and age of increased calls for increased transparency. Yes. Superintendent Huberman preaches data collection and data analysis and data informed decisions. If there is a plan, if there are issues here, let's inform with that information the community, starting with the local school council, so that then decisions can be made. But you need to be partners in that decision-making process. These are your children. This is your school. This is the neighborhood you live in. You have a right to be heard. You should not be ignored. And what I just said is something that I've heard Mr. Huberman say, and others within the Board of Education on the school board have said, they've said it time and time again, that we need parental involvement. So let's practice what we preach. And so this is, this is day 14. Let's, let's, let's bring this to an end now. I do offer myself to be part of the discussions. I'm not here just to make a declaration and walk away and say, that's it, good luck, folks. I'm, I'm ready to participate in that process. Uh, we do need and want the resources, and we want to make sure that what we're doing is the right thing for our kids, particularly, especially for our kids. Uh, and so I think that you're ready to sit down and talk. Let's open up lines of communication, and let's work towards a resolution that is a resolution that you help shape, and one that is in the best interest of the children. So, gracias a todos. Thank you. Miguel del Valle as we continue our demands for long promise and expansion. Our strangle at Whittier Elementary School highlights the symptoms of, broke, of a broken Chicago public school system. While our neighborhoods are starved of much needed fun CPS, provide charter schools and new modern schools with much funds about 160 Chicago public schools currently lack a library, a big example of, of poor pro priorities in funding of, in policy, or a strangle is your strangle. We just have broke it to light and forefront, and we know and understand we are not the only ones that CPS administration continues to ignore. Join us or struggle to fight for an equal education for all our children. CPS distribu distribution of funds are arbitrary and not based on the needs of all children community. CPS needs to return to policies 
of Harold Washington era. We're communities and parents, we are, we're, we're a core part of the decision-making process. CPS administration is denying our right to decide how funds dedicated to their schools should be distrib distributed and used. Education is a right, not a privilege. We demand that public funds be used for public schools, and, this, and that these are transparent and accountable, and that we as a parent and community residents must be part of the decision making process. These funds should be used to invest, in, invest in public schools, not at private institutions or developers. We welcome Claire Del Valle declarations of support. Mr. Del Valle has a long standing record as a fighter for more fair public education. Mi nombre es Graciela Domínguez, soy madre de la escuela William, tengo un hijo en primer grado. Estamos aquí hoy junto con el secretario de la ciudad, Miguel del Valle, a medida que continuamos nuestras demandas para una expansión. Nuestra lucha en Whittier Elementary School pone en relieve los síntomas de un sistema quebrado de escuelas públicas de Chicago, mientras las escuelas charter reciben una multitud de fondos. Es, eh, Perdón, una multitud de fondos comunitarios, mientras que las escuelas comunitarias como la nuestra siguen siendo deprivadas de fondos esenciales para el rendimiento académico de nuestros hijos. Alrededor de 160 escuelas públicas de Chicago en la actualidad carecen de una biblioteca. Un claro ejemplo de en dónde tienen sus prioridades las escuelas públicas de Chicago. Nuestra lucha es su lucha. Reconocemos y entendemos que no somos los únicos que la administración CPS con, continúa ignorando. Únase a nosotros en nuestra lucha para luchar por una educación equitativa para todos nuestros hijos. La Junta de de educación distribuye fondos de una manera arbitraria y no se basa en las necesidades de nuestros hijos o de la comunidad. CPS tiene que volver a las políticas de la época de Harold Washington, donde las comunidades y los padres fueron una parte es fundamental del proceso de decisión. La administración de CPS está negando nuestro derecho a decidir cómo los fondos dedicados a nuestras escuelas deben ser distribuidos y, edu y utilizados. La, de la educación es un derecho, no un privilegio. Exigimos que los fondos públicos se utilicen para las escuelas públicas y que el uso de estos fondos sean transparentes y que nosotros como residentes y padres Debemos ser parte del proceso y tomar las decisiones que afectan a nuestros hijos. Los fondos del TIF deben, deben utilizarse para invertirse en escuelas públicas y no en institu instituciones privadas o comerciales. Damos la bienvenida a la declaración del secretario, Miguel del, secretario municipal Miguel del Valle tiene una larga trayectoria como luchador por la educación pública más equitativa. Gracias.